Okay. Hello again and welcome to the third day of the DOT session. Today we will have a session DOT conference. Today we will have a session about open healthcare. And with that in mind, I would like to talk about Kerables. It's a, a platform dedicated in distributing open source assistive technology. And it's the outcome of the collaboration between patients, caregivers, healthcare professionals, where they co-create with makers free and accessible healthcare solutions. So, and in Kerables, we have a WhatsApp community where we can communicate share our thoughts and discuss about open source hardware in the healthcare sector. We also have a QR code that you can scan to join the WhatsApp group. And we also, every month, we have a meetup, the first Thursday of each month at the eight Singapore time, where we also discuss about open source hardware in the healthcare sector. And we also have speakers like today. Also, you can see in the presentation a picture from a Kerables meetup that happened in 2021, hosted by Fadia. So yeah, we're happy to start with them again after such a long time. So about today's meetup, we will have Sadi and Enrico presenting and their work in the field. And after that, we will have a discussion <laughs> where we can share what we're working on and ideas and thoughts about open healthcare. Uh, I think, Maybe Andriana will also join, but I'm not sure yet. We'll find out soon because there was a bit of confusion with the time. So I also prepared a brief introduction to welcome our speakers and tell you a bit more about what they're working on. So Sad is a co-founder of a small tech called uh, Spooning Lab. He also has the edible, he also runs the edible makerspace and salvage garden makerspace. And he's also in the supervisory board of Global Innovation Gathering, Global Open, so Open Science Hardware, and ROG Agency. Enrico is uh, one of the co-founders of Kerables and FabCare Network. He's been the director of Open uh, Dot Fab Lab for eight years, and currently he is consulting on digital fabrication and innovation. And Adriana. He is a, also a co-founder at Fabgear. She's a guest researcher in many universities, and she's focusing on soft robotics, textiles, and assistive devices. So I would like to thank you all, and maybe Enrico or Sad, whoever you want, you can start the presentation. Also, if you have some slides or video you want to share, you can tell Ricardo, so you can make your co-host, so you can share your screen. Those oh, yes, please, thank you. So, um, good morning, uh, afternoon, uh, <laughs> evening, uh, everyone. It's nice to, to be here and, and talk about this. I think it's so important to get the chance to actually meet each other sometimes. Um, so I will share a brief presentation. Okay, for some reason, I can't click in the button to make you co-host, but any other of the co-hosts, please can co-host him to being a co-host. Maybe. Well. Okay, Is it's it working. working. Okay, cool. So I was already co-host without knowing it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, FabCare, uh, as we were saying, um, it, it's a group of people like all you um, that's working on, on finding solutions in the end to improve the daily life of people, uh, including, uh, of course, the people that knows the best what they actually need in the development of the solutions. And I think that that's a key difference compared to the traditional approach uh, that sometimes sees people as a, a, a broken mechanisms that needs to be fixed. Uh, we, we realized that that's definitely not the right approach. And uh, we started working on that at the beginning with Kerables together uh, with Gigas, of course. Um, and then we, we noticed that a lot of labs around the world were interested in um, working on this topic. And maybe they had no 
a clear idea where to start or what was easy, what was hard. So we decided to just collect all the knowledge uh, uh, developed uh, in the last years so on a website and a, a platform and a group just to facilitate this kind of communication. So uh, FabCare has been uh, a project that started from two fab labs. Uh, one is uh, Open Dot, the lab I used to manage, and uh, Lina is the new director. So uh, I'm very happy that she managed to join in. Uh, and Fab Lab Limford, uh, where uh, uh, Adriana was uh, uh, working as well. And uh, Adriana's here. So if you want to jump in and uh, say something uh, or during the presentation, please do so. Beside uh, who started, the objective is uh, very inclusive and very horizontal and open to everybody. So our idea is just to help people to work in this field using the technologies on one hand and co-design on the other, because we do believe that innovations happen at the intersections between uh, you know human skills and technical skills. Um, and, and to do so, as I said, we framed what we want in a sort of manifesto that in our opinion is a very synthetic, clear uh, vision of what's the objective. And then in uh, two main uh, tools, let's say so, the, the first one, very uh, simple put, is the, the, the 10 steps uh, from zero to hero. So from uh, where you should start when you have no experience, but just interest in the topic up to the most complex project. So uh, complex project doesn't mean more impactful. Sometimes very simple things can be incredibly impactful. Uh, therefore, it's important to uh, don't overdo things. Otherwise, there's the risk to um, make a mess. And, and it takes a bit of experience to understand how to involve people properly, how to ask things, uh, how to design solutions, which kind of solutions are easy to design and which one are not. So I think it's good to uh, proceed step by step. Each step has a, an example that comes from uh, uh, Carable, uh, Fabcare, or other projects around the world. That's the beauty of open communities. And um, each step has a description, an example, some extra information just to uh, help people to move forward. The second big part of the platform is uh, the collections of tools. So um, it's not super easy at the beginning to interact properly with them or to know where to start or what's the difference between, uh, um, I don't know, what's a concept, what's a brief, how to, uh, which kind of technology you should use and so on. So we decided to create some tools to facilitate the co-design process. These tools are online uh, for free, of course, but also, the open files are online. So it happened in the past that when we ran some activities, the people we were running activities with, they decided to translate things in their own language. Uh, so there are versions of different, different versions of the same material just to adjust to the local culture as well. Um, Terribles, of course, is just uh, a, a dot in the network because we are a dot today since the right definition. Um, and, and we started this uh, WhatsApp group as a way to keep the people together and give them an easy platform where to interact. I will just bring a couple of examples, not too many things that, that we've done recently. So one was uh, at Bali last year and one was uh, um, I, in Bhutan this year. Um, so in, in, in Bali, there was a local association that wanted to print prosthetics. Um, locally, that's very important because it's a real need. 
um, the traffic in Bali is uh, insane and uh, many, many, many accidents happen every day and those brings to amputation very often also because of the healthcare system that they have. And there's no money to pay for proper prosthetics, let's say so. So because also of the social stigma, many people after uh, accident like that, they decided to just stop working, stay in the house. And of course that has a huge, huge impact also on the well-being of the person beside the amputation itself. So beside the capabilities of doing things. So there was this local associations that wants to work in that direction. Uh, I have a very brief video to show you what we did. Of course, the, I, I hope the connection is good enough for you to see. I will maybe remove the music. So the key point here was really about um, leveraging on all the skills of the team to figure out what could be done and not just designing a new prosthetic because you know there's plenty of solutions out there. So our job was mainly to understand the process and also the economical sustainability of that. Uh, for instance, it's uh, quite easy to print something is way harder to design it. So the fact that we could uh, cooperate together with uh, uh, the university in Jakarta was great. The people locally uh, would have been uh, just the, the, the people taking the right measurements, send them to the university in Jakarta. Uh, they would be the one modifying the files, send it back, and the locally uh, students from the local university or the association could print it um, and donate it to the uh, users. So it was really, oops, sorry. It was really about developing the proper process more than uh, new solutions. And I think that that shows the power of cooperation as well. So these are just two of the users uh, that we work with and it was really impressive to see the first results after like uh, 10 days that was the, the the duration of the challenge so this was the group uh, the people in the in the center that helped us to understand the mechanisms and local university and this was the description of the process again um, if you don't create a path that work, even if you have, if, even if you technically have solutions, nobody's gonna use it. So <laughs> it's not really uh, a solution. The next one uh, is what we've done uh, in uh, Bhutan. Uh, beside me and Adriana, Saad was there as well. Uh, actually, he was one of the main contributor because he developed a super cool project and it's going to be one of the projects you see here. So in this case, they started uh, telling us that they had a problem in recycling aluminum and they want to use it to do something good. So we thought about assistive devices. Actually, what we noticed is that uh, the local schools were not... Um, they didn't have proper tools to teach to kids with special needs. Uh, they have uh, separated schools. So the schools for kids with special needs is, is just one school. Um, but yeah, the situation there could be helped. So we identified some uh, students to work with and some projects to work with. Uh, you've seen uh, a communication board, uh, you've seen uh, you know, simple uh, 3D printed aid to hold pens. Uh, you've seen a rehabilitation uh, vest that actually Adriana uh, developed. You've seen the uh, Braille uh, printer that I guess Sad will speak about. So I will keep a bit of history on that. <laughs> but in, uh, in in very few days, we, we've been able to... Um, Okay, develop different solutions 
uh, repair the walker of a girl that uh, needed a new one. Uh, those pieces were made out of aluminum just to get the best and more resistant solution, as well as uh, other things to teach them to write or to hold things properly. Uh, as I said, the, the postural uh, vest to facilitate the therapy for one of the kids and so on. So the team was very uh, broad and we had people from Japan to Mexico uh, all over the world. And it was really, really nice to work with them uh, on, on, on so many different cases at the same time. Uh, Adriana, I don't know if you want to add something maybe on the project or? Um, no, I mean, I, I am very, yeah, uh, I think that it was a, a, a good summary about all of the ideas. I I will after um, complement some information from 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 the project from uh, Campaign for and Makeopedic. So uh, just continue a little bit with <laughs> Bob Care. Uh, okay. But but yes, I mean I, I think that uh, one of um, as you mentioned one of the I guess that our um, beautiful results is really this uh, one of the 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 last challenge that uh, I think that that summarizes uh, like bit the power of the community, but also the the engagement in in a, in a country that has a, a really restrict access to uh, healthcare and especially um physiotherapist uh, and i think that uh, that it's a, a, it's just not only a, about this moment for sure but it's uh, and especially because we are doing this in a voluntary based but also how we could uh, trigger these ideas in a longer term and i think that this is a a, a very nice um opportunity to to work together in these um actions uh, with with Caravos and Fabcare and for sure what what uh, Sad will tell uh, afterwards. Okay, thank you. So these were just two of the examples. Um, we had other things, but I don't want to take too too much time, so I try to be synthetic. So thank you very much, and uh, I will stop sharing. And thank you very much, Jose. Beautiful presentation. I would like to ask if you could share the links of the videos that you showed us because I want to watch them after and of the presentation if you have it. I also shared in the chat a Google Doc that I will uh, put all the links that they shared and will try to take notes. If you want to note something down, feel free. Thank you again, Enrico. Very beautiful presentation. Who wants to continue presenting or feels ready? Or if you have any comments, please feel free to. Ask Enrico or yes. Maybe you can continue if you feel like ready, Andriana, so we can keep it like, I don't know, because you're also very close to both the subject. Amazing. Sure. Yeah, I will just uh, continue a little bit with the with the uh, line what we have uh, uh, with Enrico and bring some of the examples what we did also in the past. Uh, um, just to to mention also that um, uh, when when we start to to work with Enrico, we had also from from the past several also their ideas working together, also looking. Uh, what uh, caravels, uh, let's say, what what amazing projects uh, were uh, the caravel group uh, doing, and I think that that was the idea to to join also what we did locally and regionally in Camp Linford. So that's why um, I just wanted just to to to, to mention this because I, when when we start to talk again we about uh this meeting i just wanted to show some examples of what we are doing also regionally in, in not only in, in germany but let's say in campaign for in a more like small scale and uh, yeah that's uh, one of the projects i actually my for myself bring me uh, 
in the idea of assistive devices that it was my project uh, about the um, developing this uh, let's say uh, orthosis for 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 frank who had a par paralysis and so i start to understand like how or let's say to 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 think about how i can put this technologies at uh, disposition of people who had such a needs or or maybe for the ones that doesn't have a, 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 a solution, let's say in rehabilitation. So that's uh, what, what I did, uh, that it was also again, uh, one month, uh, um, let's say development, but uh, but it was a, a very nice inspiration for for other, let's say, um, initiatives. And especially uh, based on this experience, we built um, uh, a kind of an academy that we call this Biomechademy together with Professor uh, William McGill uh, in the um, in the Faculty of uh, Bionics and, and Biomechanics in in Hochschule Rheinwald, um, and just exploring like some some really nice projects, for example. Imagine for for people who who doesn't have a hand, for example, they want to play ukulele, and how, for example, they could play with with a pedal, or for example, how we could express other kind of um, uh, projects, or for example, communication with with partner. So this is also another example of of the project how how uh, from Camp Linford, that was also a cooperation. For a person who is uh, uh, Catherine is an uh, um, athlete uh, for the Paralympic Games in Tokyo. She needs, for example, a, a share, a, a proper share for for the for for uh, to be like more comfortable uh, by by let's say playing, and and we start to do this with digital fabrication, but after we. We were thinking uh, that's maybe a point in which we might need to have a little bit more uh, a material. So we cooperate with a company, Hoda, in order to develop from the three D, let's say, uh, for the digital fabrication in a in a in another procedure with carbon fiber. But after she's really using it for um, for the competitions. And um, yeah, that's another another small project with another very uh, um, with uh, Nico Buhet from My Human Kit. He is also participating in in other of our meetings with uh, Fabcare. Uh, he also uh, lost. Uh, his arm in an accident and he uh, was telling me how difficult it is to have a winter without the prosthetic that it could be very cold and after we de developed like let's say a, a device like for him uh, and understanding like how we could parameterize this and, and do something in the lab um, and and Step by step, we we are also integrating this and and having like kind of a contact together with with Fabric Academy that is another lecture, another program uh, inside of the Fab community, and also trying to integrate the topic of uh, assistive devices there, uh, especially in uh, in the topic of of uh, robotics. Something that looks like how organic shapes can can be more close to 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 the body. And uh, I think that the last uh, project I just wanted to introduce is a, a, a regional project. The, the name is Makeopedics. Uh, it's a project that, uh, that is in cooperation with, uh, with Matrix, uh, a company in which I, I was, uh, or yeah, I'm uh, working and leading a lab and together with the University of Applied Science, Rheinbaum. And this uh, project started uh, in the idea of open innovation and digital fabrication with these uh, small companies that they want to understand how we could implement this in healthcare, uh, how we could implement, techno let's say, new technologies in healthcare, uh, especially when, when this field is very uh, handcrafted. So we start to, to think a little bit more about how we could uh, um, make, let's say, workflows uh, and, and understanding um, 
a little bit the, the needs, especially for example, in this in this case of sensory feedback for people with diabetes. So uh, here we see like a little bit like the step by step what 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 we did. But just to to mention also that um, the diabetes is a is a problem uh, with people uh, that affects uh, like uh, uh, more than seven million people in Germany. But also it has a, a very uh, changes in life in diet, but especially in in food it could uh, have a risk of disabilities and amputation. So that's why when we start to work together with these companies we start to understand like a little bit more deeply about the concept, about what are the challenges in temperature, what uh, could be possible to do from the point of view uh, from the Fab Labs. And, and just to, to understand how we locally could produce something, especially after the pandemic, we see that the resources are less and we need we have this need of distributed uh, manufacturing. So here we see like how we could do some prototyping together with the Fab Lab, but also with the company and how we could integrate both, uh, let's say, um, techniques uh, or both, let's say, knowledge and know-how together. And we develop a, at the end an insole that it's uh, made by uh, embroidery machines, actually. Uh, producing our the the own sensor, which is in in industry uh, mainly made uh, in in a big mass, and we wanted to see how how is the possibility that they produce this locally in the com in the company. So and especially because uh, almost each of these companies they have like a. a, a, a some skills in with textiles. It was very interesting to see how they uh, after develop, and yeah, and and make the whole process together. Brought a, a really interesting mutual that like, literacy understanding. What are the constraints of the of uh, manufacturing uh, there? So um, and and especially to understand uh, how commercial could could be a product that is very handcrafted, but also using the power of, of the knowledge of the labs. So yeah, that's uh, what I wanted to, to tell a little bit about the, the results that we achieved in the visualization and embedded systems and no pressure points. Uh, but I think that one of, uh, for me, the, the, the biggest uh, parts was the, this co-creation also an implementation for, for these uh, medical suppliers and also uh, to get like uh, an, a step forward more not only for the prototyping and, and the conceptual part, but also how they could really uh, implement this in, in future. And, and yeah, that's uh, from that I wanted to tell uh, from my side, but I think that it's, um, yeah, we are also here to, to discuss uh, from other projects and thank you for your for your time if you have questions uh i will be happy to answer thank you very much it was very interesting all your projects looks amazing and yes thank you. thank you for presenting and thank you for your time Thank you for the invitation. We can continue with uh, the last presentation and then we can discuss about uh, the presentation and everyone can ask questions after, if you all agree. So if you are ready to present sad, you can continue. Thank you. It's super inspiring work, and I have um, many things that I probably will need to follow up with both of you. Um, but let's uh, let me just go through a couple of things that I wanted to share first. Um, so I wanted to just sort of very quickly link it back to uh, the work that Carables I uh, was involved with the exhibition uh, back in twenty twenty, the end of twenty twenty. 
I put it uh, up, up a little um, showcase of assistive devices in Singapore. It was an incredibly rainy day and it was pandemic outside and it wasn't the ideal condition. Um, but we put together um, a sort of a display and it was necessary. What we learned from this exercise was um, that there's a lot of gaps in people's understanding of what is assistive devices, what is assistive tech. Um, and a lot of the work that I'm doing now is quite directly linked back to the exhibition that we did back then. Um, I also, while sort of preparing this, the photos for this little talk, I found that our little virtual exhibition that we put together is still online. Um, you can actually go and take a look at um, the virtual exhibition. You can walk around the space. Uh, you can go and see the little maker space that we had back there, all the little exhibits that we put on, on the little tables. Um, and there's a little video on this side that you can sort of look at and walks you through the entire pro uh, space. Um, so it's still very much online. So I'm glad that we took the time and, and space to <laughs> make that happen back then. Uh, so yay digital. Um, but now today uh, where we are uh, is in a different place. Um, the makerspace uh, that I was trying to um, bring closer to persons with disabilities uh, was evicted from two different shared spaces, mostly because of rental concerns in Singapore. Uh, but we now have a home in the Pongol Regional Library, uh, which is the National Library's biggest and shiniest new library that is designed for accessibility in all of its forms, visible and invisible. It's really a very nice place. Um, but there's a small little room upstairs where uh, we have access to uh, digital fabrication tools. So we've got 3D printers that are um, uh, placed at wheelchair height and um, laser cutters and so on. And it's accessible to the public. And this is important because uh, what we're trying to do at the Makerspace every uh, once a week is to bring people in um, uh, on a public sort of uh, the same way that you would go into a library uh, to be able to access these tools and apply it towards the co-creation of custom assistive devices. Um, and very much in line with you know what, what Carables has all been about. Um, Couple of examples here of things that we've done before. Uh, the key guard is something that is you see on the left is uh, just co-designed with uh, occupational therapists. Um, the nail cutter that you see in the middle that seems to be very popular amongst uh, participants, they immediately get what this is about and why 3D printing can be used for more than just cute little uh, keychains. Um, so we use this a lot. Um, and there are people who've asked to have this made and people who have uh, redesigned it in, in the library space. Um, we do have access to um, a laser cutter, which again, I wanted to showcase here because it's in a public library and the library doesn't charge for it. So the same way that you would go in and I don't know, access printing like copies of pages, um, you can access uh, a laser cutting uh, facility. You do have to do a training course and all of that, but we just, you know, utilize that for our purposes. So things like e-guards on the left can be laser cut at the library. So what we try and do is bring uh, these three core concepts uh, closer to the Singapore um, audience. And we try and do this in as inclusive a way as, as we can. Uh, there's a lot of gaps in perception of digital fabrication and how assistive devices are, um, uh, or digital fabrication works for assistive devices or assistive purposes. And that's really the core of this um, uh, intervention is to try and dispel or demystify uh, the ideas that people hold that, you know, 3D printing is expensive and it needs a lot, extremely difficult uh, to do and it's it's not for everybody. Um, so we try and create a space where people are a safe space, where people are able to come in and, you know, participate in a makery kind of way uh, and work on things. Um, 
this uh, is kind of what our space looks like. So you have a lot of things going on here on the table. Um, you, we have uh, the Braille printer that's in the middle. I didn't, uh, I mean, this is something that Enrico mentioned from our uh, uh, challenge in Bhutan that we built a Braille printer. Uh, it was entirely out of uh, an open source project and digitally fabricated within three days, which is still staggering in my recollection. Um, so we uh, tried to replicate the same thing within our uh, makerspace in the library. And it took us a lot longer uh, to uh, replicate what we did in Bhutan. But uh, we now have a device there on the table. I didn't um, add too many images and things about the Braille printer. So this is probably the only one uh, over there. But I can talk about that separately on uh, maybe another occasion. What's also going on at the table is uh, members of the public, people who just signed up and thought that what's this weird thing going on at the corner of the library? Um, it's It's got all these, you know, colorful things in the window, uh, but there are these crazy people who are uh, wearing volunteer badges um, and are doing things with persons with disabilities. So we have somebody at the table who is uh, who cannot see, and she's actually helping us test a uh, an inclusive game that we've designed, a tactile version of a game that I'd, I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, so we try and do this uh, on a regular basis. And the, the regularity of this is, is important because a lot of the interventions that happen in Singapore, especially, and I've noticed this in Southeast Asia in general, is that they're all one-offs. Like you get funding or sponsorship from something to do it maybe one weekend or, you know, uh, one day or a one week at the most, and then it never happens. There's no follow up until maybe the next year, if you're lucky, and then everything has changed. Um, so instead, what we've done here is to try and create something that can be accessed on a public basis every week. So once a week, every uh, Sunday, uh, we do this kind of session, and the amount of insight that we get into this is just phenomenal. So we call it MIT Sundays which is make inclusive tech. This was not my idea. <laughs> this was the idea from the National Library. They said, look, let this, this might work. And I thought it was cute because it like links back to the origins of the fab network in MIT. So we call it MIT Sundays. So we linked um, now uh, as a space to the Enable network, which is an, a good example of, I think, uh, an online open source community. Um, and we've been doing uh, similar work to what Enrico shared uh, that they did in Bali. And um, it, it's, again, not intended to be a uh, service. It's meant to be a way to engage people with different limb differences. And uh, so far, it's it's at the limit of what our, my volunteer pool is able to provide. But the... Um, response has been overwhelmingly positive, that people see that, you know, okay, this is something that uh, is not just about prosthetics, it's about uh, changing things. It's, it's, it's more like a fashion sense. It's more like expression of personality and style. So this person, individual that we've been working with, Carol, she's a bit of a superstar uh, in the inclusion campaign in Singapore. You see her plastered all over like uh, train stations and so on, talking about inclusion in the workplace. And she insisted that she had to get her um, prosthetic thing done in shocking pink. Um, and so we were able to do things here that wouldn't otherwise be possible in using like the medical uh, prosthetic route, which in Singapore is amazing, as in the technology that um, is available through the healthcare route is just phenomenal. Um, but uh, again, I think with the Singapore context, it's important to make the distinction. Um, so this is something that I was hoping to like pick up on. This is an excellent uh, open source model. Um, there's a lot of interest around this that has been generated in our interactions in the last few months. Um, and now there's a request for a bionic version of this, uh, which is beyond my capabilities. So again, uh, Enrico, Adriana probably need to have a conversation about this later on, see if you can point me in the right direction there. Um, 
Yeah, so uh, on the simpler side, um, again, the, the, this is something that uh, I learned from our interactions through the Fab Network. The Fab Care Network pointed me to the Fab Lab Shinagawa. I met with the people who were at the Bhutan uh, Challenge, and they pointed me to the work that they were doing, which is very similar to um, what we're trying to do in Singapore. And so I immediately went back and, you know, introduced this to as many Singapore uh, occupational therapists as I possibly could. Um, and we've added that, uh, created a uh, sort of like a curated list of these devices. It seems to be very popular. Everybody comes in and says, okay, this is great. Uh, where can I download it? Um, so we put this together as an easy way for people to just, you know, uh, download. So we've got lists. And if you have recommendations, we'll add them to the list. Um, they're just sort of like Spotify playlists for 3D printables. Um, Printables.com seems to be the one where uh, people are going now more often than the others. But uh, it's a good resource to have. Um, so, yeah, we, this is the kind of um, approach that we are taking. Um, we uh, have these little badges to distinguish the fact that we are not just volunteers. We have to distinguish that we are unpaid volunteers. Because in Singapore, it turns out that even if you say that, no, I'm a volunteer, uh, they, the public assumption is that, yeah, you're getting sponsored by some kind of a government grant. Uh, but we're totally not. We're all very much self-sponsored. So um, everybody has a little badge that they can borrow and choose to wear if they want to. Uh, and that sort of sets the expectation level. And again, it's a very Singapore thing. I don't know if uh, there's something similar in other places. I'd be curious to know. Um, so very quickly, uh, the last thing I wanted to share is a bunch of uh, games that have uh, been very much developed as part of our every Sunday kind of interactions. Because um, as people come in, um, our first question is, what are you interested in? And what would you like to spend your time the Sunday that you have, you know, well, what would you spend like to spend your time working on? And we found out very quickly that people need some kind of an onboarding process and uh, jumping straight into prosthetics or jumping straight into disability is a little bit too overwhelming for people. And um, through these conversations, we found that there was an expressed desire for making uh, games more accessible or more inclusive. And these were hands-on kind of tactile tabletop games that I think a lot of people are going to uh, probably uh, be playing over the Christmas holidays. Um, but this is something that I think everybody can find easy to relate with. But we use this as a way to talk about, you know, the fabrication process, but also the concern, the considerations that you would need to have if you were dealing with somebody with disabilities. So we encourage people to like blindfold themselves and play the game uh, to simulate a person with, with uh, visual impairments. Um, something very simple is the one that you see on the left, which is uh, tic-tac-toe or knots and crosses. Uh, but we've 3D printed this so that the texture of each one of the pieces, uh, you can feel it when you close your eyes and play the game, it's slightly more challenging. But what we found is that even with children of this age um, who come by, because this is a public library, right? We never know who is going to come by. Um, they get very bored with the tic-tac-toe game very quickly. Um, and there was somebody else who came in and said, you know what? There's an adult version of tic-tac-toe. And it's called super tic-tac-toe. And that's what you see on the right-hand side. And you've got like nine tic-tac-toe games within a tic-tac-toe game. So you have to win three of the tic-tac-toe games in order to win the entire set and so it was I've, I've so far i've played this game many many times and i'm yet to win one um without with uh, haven't been successful um this is another one so this is a game where you have to get three in a row and you win uh this is a game that's probably familiar to many it's called connect four uh, and it's trademarked and yada, yada, whatnot, belongs to other people. So we took that concept and made it match four, uh, where you get where you have to put four in a row in order to win. And again, these are cubes instead of coins. 
which are hard to hold if you don't have fingers. And we have a young girl who's seven year old. Uh, she comes by the space every now and again, and she's missing hands. Uh, so we designed this specifically to see if she would be, uh, she would find it interesting. And it turns out she wasn't interested at all, uh, only because it wasn't printed in pink. So we printed it in pink and we got her <laughs> to be one of our uh, play testers and now she's got a game and she likes to play it at home. Um, at the same time, you know, we use this as a way to uh, play test and in, in, in introduce uh, volunteers as well as other people who are interested. Um, so this has taken a life of its own. Uh, this is already the second iteration of the game that you're seeing. We're testing it with persons with visual impairments, not just uh, limited motor skills. Um, and uh, that led to another conversation about people come up with ideas and they're like, oh, you know, have you played this game called Pentago? And it's like, no, what does Pentago? Apparently you can get five in a row and you win. It's the same basic concept as Tic-Tac-Toe or Connect Four. It's just that you have to get five in a row. And each one of these little squares that you're seeing has to be rotatable. So people prototyped this using post-it notes and origami and whatever tools that were available. And we came up with the concept, we printed it, and we tested it out. We got people to play it. We got people to play it blindfolded, uh, again, as a way to try and simulate uh, what it would look and feel like. So now this has become a mainstay of anybody who comes by the space. We encourage them to try it. This came out uh, instead of just listening to me go on and on and on or volunteers talk on and on and on about what we're trying to do. We try and encourage them to try this out. And these are individuals who are visually impaired and the feedback from them was like used for um, the next iteration. So it gives us an opportunity to talk about um, iterations. Okay, <clears throat> so that's our inclusive games. Um, and I wanted to just wrap up by talking about our process. It's heavily informed by the critical making uh, concepts. We uh, had a bunch of occupational therapists who uh, came by our sessions, Sunday sessions, and uh, similar to the Fab Lab Shinagawa people, uh, we, uh, like I am not an occupational therapist. And so what we did was open the door and say, look, you guys have expressed an interest. Why don't you come in and we'll try and create a workshop together with you, uh, for you. So we call it OTOT, uh, which in Singapore slang means own time, own target. So it's got a little pun over there, which means that you can do it whenever you feel like. Um, but uh, occupational therapists by and for. Uh, so we're putting this together right now using uh, all of these kinds of DIY processes and um, uh, the sort of try, uh, learn by doing kind of attempt where you do low cost, low uh, resolution prototypes, get encourage people to try things out and then develop them into um, uh, 3D printable or otherwise uh, prototypes. Um, so this is something that we're still working on. Uh, there was a a, a, um, um, a request, a specific request for thermoforming, uh, and I understand now after this interaction that that is um, an area that needs to be explored a little bit uh, more in detail. So that's probably what we will be doing um, early next year. Um, this is the one aspect of the critical making uh, framework that I really, really, really like. Um, I wanted to uh, mention this here, and I think this is going to be super helpful in uh, guiding our work uh, with the Salvage Garden Makerspace. Uh, the idea of allyships, allyships and still seems to be a little bit uh, foreign to conversations around assistive devices, but also uh, conversations around disability. Uh, most of the caregivers tend to get left be out or left behind uh, in the conversation. And you either talk directly to the person who is, for example, sitting in a wheelchair, um, or you uh, talk directly to the caregiver, uh, the medical professional. Um, so we want to try and bring co-creation in together with the caregiver as part of uh, the, the process. So um, that's what we've been working on. And um, we need all the help we can get. We're all the uh, we're just a bunch of volunteers, unpaid volunteers. Um, so yes, please do reach out, and I'm happy to collaborate. 
Thank you very much. It was amazing. Your work is amazing. It was very nice to hear. Thank you. So if anyone has any questions or wants to add anything, want to talk about their work in open healthcare, feel free to do it. I'm just amazed by all three of your presentations and all the nice things that have been going on in the past uh, few years where it didn't look so often uh, what is happening. And unfortunately, we scheduled this only for an hour, and I guess we should have had two hours or something. <laughs> Uh, because now we don't have any time left for real proper interaction because in these busy lives, people have to move to the next uh, call or wherever they, they need to be heading. But I'm so happy to see also other people in the call um, in the in the event uh, who should be presenting next, I would say. Like, I'm also interested to see what is Open Dot doing these days? What is um, Mustafa doing around the topics? What is happening within Tolokar, for example, or Cadiz, um, and what are the Philippines doing? Yeah, and, and also um, in, in Cairo and in Egypt generally, uh, because I'm very sure Sanotech is doing something uh, also in, in lines of um, care builds or healthcare or, or everything like this. So, yeah, I'm very excited. Thank you once again. I have the time to listen. <laughs> oh, Me too. Oh, I'm also really excited for this and want to thank you for your presentations. Um, as always, I, I'm like I'm I'm thrilled that uh, Rania with the wonderful work she's doing at Gig, um, and officially a big thank you for host wonderfully hosting the session, Rania. Um, is reviving some of this community work now of course kind of with a small team and everything it's sometimes hard to uphold um some of these activities so as always i have the question of like is there anything we could be doing differently or better to make sure that you can connect uh the way that you are and it's great to see all these cross collaborations continuing and taking place so long after like Caribou's finished officially. So um, that's a question that goes out to all of you and maybe for, for us and the team, are there other ways that we can support your work that would be meaningful for you? And um, I also just wanted to share that I posted a link in the chat. This is a kind of, I'm lacking a little bit of vocabulary today, a downfall on my personal, connecting my personal and my work life, I guess. This is my cousin's space in Portland. It's a maker space that specifically, I think Sardis is maybe the only one who's ever heard of this before, um, who specifically designs uh, with and for people with hearing disabilities. So I thought it was quite interesting as you were presenting because it was a lot about you know people with physical disability and sight impairment. And maybe there's a nice sort of universe of things to exchange out there. Now, the downfall is that my cousin is not part of gig for reasons I cannot explain myself, but um, I'd be happy, of course, to make the connection otherwise and maybe one day this can be fixed but thought I'd share the Simon space link with you guys yeah and maybe just quickly of course if you've got like the Caribbeals group of course is open on WhatsApp and if you have ideas how we can support more better more effectively in different ways then of course that's an open space for us to share ideas after the meeting as well. Um, I would like to say something. I worked on Caribou, so that was basically my start at Gig, which is uh, a lovely start because it really, uh, it, was, it was a great way to get to understand this world. And I've worked with Enrique, Enrique before, also um, during the sort of partner, uh, of Caribou. Uh, I want to just uh, maybe also one way we could uh, see this going forward is maybe have creating more community around it uh, at gig. So it's so great that there's so many different partners working on this, and it's so lovely to see that it's still continuing and even better than before. And many things are happening. Uh, but maybe this is uh, an opportunity for us to kind of reflect on 
how do we fill in the missing dots in terms of communication and connection of all these great initiatives, like some of it, which stem from the same place in a way, or came from the same passion and excitement during Caribos before or after. Um, so I'm happy that the WhatsApp group is there. I'm looking into ways where we can enhance actually the communication in the WhatsApp group and in other groups, uh, and hopefully be able to maybe even create a new project altogether, find a new one possibility for this to continue that has been a long discussion since Caribou's ended. Uh, yeah, and I'm just very, very moved uh, to see all of this happening. And thank you so much, Rania, for doing the amazing facilitation today. I have a question to Saad. Oh, Saad. Yes. Open dot has this this uh, uh replicate yourself kits, you know, the one in Rico show when it was translated. Do you plan to have sent, you know, how to make um how to how to make it at libraries? I need a good name, you know, after so many good names. Uh, how to make it at libraries, you know? A manual on implementation and examples and the games and the strategy, you know, invite people and this. Do you plan to do that? What the um, onboarding process was very much collaborative in the sense that um, the volunteers that come by every Sunday uh, decided that the, what they would like to have as an onboarding process would be the games. Um, and they said, look, this is something that there is um, uh, a level of confidence in talking about, but also in linking it back to um, the nature of the work. So the inclusive games, um, we wanted, we, we basically started with the match for and connect for as a way to uh, basically interest this seven-year-old girl who was not particularly interested in our work. But Every time we did that, we found um, a new idea. And then there was this tic-tac-toe and then there was super tic-tac-toe and now there's Pentago. Um, so this is growing in directions that no, none of us anticipated. Um, so it's it sort of organically turned into a an onboarding process that works for the space. Um, but in terms of like bringing it forward and uh, building something on top of it, uh, we're trying to focus on occupational therapists because apparently um, there's potential revenue generation uh, over there because uh, otherwise we just wind up spending volunteer effort on trying to get proposals for funding and it never happens. So instead we found that directing their efforts towards revenue generation through doing our work is a much better approach. So our focus now is um, how do we make these uh, inclusive games accessible to people to maybe download for free or buy if they wanted it to um, and at the same time work on uh, making workshops specifically for occupational therapists. Uh, I will just go ahead uh, just for for uh, because I, I I think that that's the the room for 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 pitching ideas I mean I I am now working in a, in an exchange uh, with the University of Arts within Wales, so that's why I'm late here actually. But the um, the reason is that we are also thinking in ways for navigation in museums for people with disabilities. So I think that um, that's also a, a very nice uh, project that maybe combine this um, spirit of libraries and open spaces, which needs also a lot of like attention and 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 I think that a, a very interesting interdisciplinary place to to work in between art and technology and what we can do. I think that it would be very very interesting to to think um about in future. Hi Adriana, this is Rosana. I'm from the Philippines and I just wanted to um jump in a little bit on the conversation. So um, when I first started Sparkle Lab, a few, like a couple of years ago now, I think it was 2014, 2015, 
we had um a deaf girl come into our maker space, right? And so the question was like, we had like all of the kids could hear except for her. And so to break the ice, we started um playing Just Dance. And she was the one who hit like all the perfect scores. <laughs> Even if she couldn't, you know, hear anything, she really felt the music. And so with the kids, um, you know, we started talking about what it meant to have disabilities. And for an entire week, the kids had to draw a lot and not be able to use their right hand, their left hand, not be able to walk, not be able to see. And we kind of like simulated it so they could experience it. Um, and we gave them a design challenge. And speaking about like museums and stuff, we um, one group had to make a concert um, for those who couldn't hear. And the other had to make an art exhibit for those who couldn't see. Um, and the kids came up with like really kind of cool stuff. The concert was just like super simple, makey, makey Play-Doh in different colors. But it was attached to a TV, which they turned into a table. So the the idea was when you press the different colors, the sounds were what brought that concert experience um, over. And with the with the art exhibit for those who couldn't see they used a lot of tactile stuff from plush cloth the different like squiggly materials um which was kind of cool to have them thinking about things like that they also managed to use a raspberry pi with a camera to do text to speech so they could read the title of the artwork and who created it which i thought was pretty cool <laughs> but yeah so i just wanted to share that That's a complex approach. I mean, if you're going to take Raspberry Pi and cameras, that's already like up there. That's brilliant. They wanted to do it so it could read books. But then like when we tested it, like with me blindfolded, I kept on knocking it over. <laughs> um, so <laughs> like on purpose also to show them like the the fault in their design and what was really cool was they found on the internet someone who had done the same um but mounted it on lego mindstorms and so we did it on lego mindstorms and when there was a pause from reading that's when the mindstorms would turn the page so it actually came out really well very cool Yeah, really nice. I think that it the, the, the first part in empathizing and again to be a really powerful tool to interact also with with the first users. Thank you again. Now I don't know if we have more time, but I think there are other sessions after. So if you don't have anything else to add. I was very happy to have you all, especially not everyone, but thank you very much, Sad Adrian and Enrico, that is not here anymore. He left the call for presenting. You put a lot of work in your presentation. It was so interesting and so inspiring, and I love learning more about it since I'm learning. Thank you so, so much. It was beautiful, and you look very talented as well, so congratulations for that. Thank you, and yeah, I will, I'm looking forward to what's the recording See more careful what you're doing, research about it. Thank you very much. And thank you for your time. And thank everyone for joining. Thank you, Gig. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day. Ciao, See you ciao. soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.